This is the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X. If you're interested in hearing more about this tiny yet capable multi-use item, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Flextail Gear for sending me the Tiny Pump 2X so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do is I'll take you down to my countertop here. I'll go over the physical and performance specifications for this tiny item. And then of course, we'll do some demonstrations. And just before we take a closer look at the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X, I thought I'd show you what else came with it. So this is the box that the unit arrived in. And you can see on the cover that there are two color versions the orange and the white. I quite like the orange one only because just in case I lay it down on the forest floor and it makes, makes it easier to find again of course. Inside of the box came a number of items to start with. Here is the warranty information and instruction manual, a USB type C charging cable, there was this stuff sack inside that allows you to carry everything all in one place when you take it out into the field. And finally, inside of the box, there are five little nozzle connections that you can use with the pump for a variety. It should pretty much uh, cover just about every use you can think of. Now, I only have used three of them so far, but I'll show you each of them and maybe you can recognize something you can use it for. Like this one, for instance, I'm not quite sure. I'm thinking maybe a beach inflatable toy or pillow or something like that. So there is that one. There is, these are the two nozzles that I tend to use most often. They are the cone shaped nozzles and pretty much everything I have will, can be uh, inflated with either of these two nozzles. This is the universal nozzle. There is one item that I'll demonstrate this using this on. So if you have something that doesn't quite fit all the other nozzles, good chance that this one will adapt to it and close enough anyway to make it work. And finally, there's this nozzle. I'm not quite sure I would use this one for. It does have a threading inside so that you uh, could thread it onto something and then this end would attach to the pump. But again, I'm not quite sure. If you have any suggestions what I might use that for, then please put them in the comments section at the bottom. All right, a minute ago, I mentioned that this was the new version of the tiny pump and I can only imagine that there's an older version. I'm not aware of the older version, but I do see from some of the key features that there is some improvements to this one. So this one apparently has improved inflation pressure pressures. I'll give you more about that in a moment. I will say that it does have some multifunctional use to it, which is kind of what drew me to this and made it something that you may want to consider because of course you're carrying something uh, electronic and have something of extra weight, but Maybe you can justify that if you can get multi-use out of it. So what can you get out of it? Obviously, the pump itself. So there is the air pump, and the pump has two directions of flow. It will pump out to inflate your whatever needs inflation, of course. But it can also be reversed, and those nozzles can be put on to act as a vacuum for drawing air out of something. I'll have a demonstration for that in a moment. It does have a light on this end of it, which has three lumen settings. Quite nice to have. This replace could replace either a flashlight or at least a light, a lamp inside of your tent or shelter. And it is bright enough to certainly do that. It also does have a D-ring on one end to make it easy enough, of course, to suspend from the top of a ridge line or any hooks inside of your tent. And one more thing I don't see using too often in the field, but maybe you want to use this at home. And that is, it does have a magnetic base, so it will attach to anything mag magnetic. Maybe it's useful for having with you in the vehicle if you need to do some type of repair or like I've done recently. I had to work on the sink in my kitchen and this actually attached to the bottom of the sink so I could see what I was doing underneath. So it did come in handy after all. All right, quickly, let's go through the physical and performance specifications for the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X. I'm going to be putting all this information in the video description below so that you have it for your reference. So starting with the size, it is 2.24 inches in length which is 57 millimeters. It is 1.8 inches in diameter, which is 46 millimeters. And it comes in at 3.4 ounces, which is 96 grams. As far as performance specifications, one of the things most people are interested in knowing is, is it waterproof? And the answer is yes to an IPX4 rating, which is to say that it will withstand having rain on it or splashes from all sides. Although I think I'd probably try to keep it as dry as possible. 
internally it has a 1300 milliamp hour battery now the company says that you can inflate the average pillow 20 times and the average air mattress 10 times uh, i think uh, average is a good way of saying it i haven't tested and i have two different air mattresses i'll demonstrate this on in a moment but it would certainly depend on the size of your air mattress now one of the things i understand that's improved on this over the older version is the inflation pressure so this one has a 4 kpa inflation pressure with a filling speed of 180 liters per minute the light inside as i mentioned i'll do demonstrations of all of these features in a few moments time has a color rating of 4500k it has three lumen settings the low of 40 lumens which will act or last for 10 hours i think that would be good inside of a tent maybe even a little bit bright but in, you know for at least uh, getting ready in the evening or getting around and making your tent up uh, you know 40 lumens is pretty good around the camp though you may want to bump it up to the medium of 160 lumens but that'll only last two and a half hours and high at 400 lumens will only last for one hour and it does provide enough light to navigate uh, it's more of a floodlight than it is a spotlight so it doesn't reach out very far so i would not count on this to replace your flashlight totally but certainly around a campsite and uh, while you're preparing a meal or anything uh, this would certainly do that task quite well but you are going to reduce the amount of uh, battery life significantly over time and also quickly i'll go over the operation of this tiny little pump and then we'll get to doing some demonstrations so it's very simple there's one button right here and this is used to activate both the pump and the light and by the way right next to it is the usb type c charging port so we'll talk more about that in a moment to activate the pump it's a double press not a single but a quick double press now it will turn this on but i'll tell you i find the noise or the sound of this a bit annoying so i won't leave it on but you can see that's how that operates and i'll show you how the uh, nozzles go on in a moment now if i just want to use the light then it's just a single press but it's a press and hold and then the light will come on and then if i tap through the light you can see it rotates through each of the lumen settings all right, so as far as attaching the nozzles to this, then first off, decide if it's gonna be inflation or deflation. I'll demonstrate both. And you can see there are arrows on the side of the device, which means that at the white end, that's where you attach your nozzle if you're looking to inflate something. So let me just pick one of the nozzles at random. They fit on quite snug. And that's all there is to it, really. And then you fit this to whatever it is you're going to inflate. Now, you can also reverse this, take the nozzle, place it on the other end so the airflow is still going in this direction but now when you turn it on it'll act as a vacuum drawing air out of whatever you have and I have a vacuum bag just for that demonstration all right as far as demonstrations go i have three air mattresses here this these two are air mattresses that you inflate with pumps that came with them and i'll tell you what i mean by that this one is a self-inflating air mattress this is very similar to the therma rest but this is one that is made and used by the canadian military uh, i'll show you why i chose to include that in the demonstration in a minute and here i have two small inflatable pillows that i'll demonstrate on so what i'm going to do is is take each of these out of the bag. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the mattresses too much except just enough to understand why I'm choosing to use an air pump with it and then I'll do the inflations for each of them but what I'll do when it comes to that point is I'll uh, speed up the video so you don't have to sit and watch uh, five or six minutes of air inflation. So this one is a Sea to Summit air mattress. What's unique about this one is that it has two uh, chambers for air uh, that you fill in, one on either side. I'll open it up in a minute and you'll see it. The benefit there, of course, is that you have uh, two areas that hold air, so you can adjust the amount of pressure you want inside of each one of those to make it more or less comfortable. Or in case one deflates unintentionally, you still have half of your air mattress giving you some comfort during the evening. Now, this is the pump that you use with this air mattress. It's kind of it is a bellows type effect starts off like a bit of a dry bag it draws air in and i will show you how that works but i'm, I'm not going to inflate it obviously so let's unroll this okay. 
And you can see here, and I'll bring it up so you can see it a little closer to the camera, is the inflation port and deflation port. So you open up one tab and that's where you inflate it. And when you go to deflate it, you'll open up the second tab, to let all the air out. Of course, we're just looking for inflation. So first thing I want to do is match up the right nozzle. And that just happens to be a perfect fit. This is the larger of the two cone nozzles. I'll bring it up to the camera a little closer in a moment just before we get started. So I'm fitting it on to the inflation end of the pump. But just before I do that, I'll show you this pump here. This is the hand one that you would use. And again, you would fit that in on the nozzle and it just snugs in. And then you just sit there and pump it back and forth. Uh, it works, I'll tell you that, but it, it takes quite a bit of time to do. All right, so let me just show you how this port would work on the camera, on the mattress. So you can see the nozzle fits on the end here, and it actually stays right on, so you don't have to hold it during the inflation process. So let me get this one started, and uh, again, I'll speed up as we go. All right, that took very little time at all to inflate both sides of this uh, air mattress. It's a little firmer than I would probably sleep on most of the time, but that's great. I can just let a little air out and I'm good to go. All right, let's get ready to do the second air mattress. All right, the second air mattress is the one from Amok, and this is the one that they sell to work with their hammocks. It is larger, considerably larger than the other our mattress, the one from Sea to Summit. So, and to be honest, it's more comfortable as well. So I'll show you the mattress in a second. This is the inflation bag that comes with it. And the way this operates, it, it's actually uh, considerably more labor to uh, inflate this bag than it is with the little pump that came with the Sea to Summit. But this is just a big open sack is all it is. And there's the attachment that would go on the air mattress. And basically the way this works is once it's attached, you just kind of fluff it up, gather air in the, in the bag, and then push it into the mattress. It does work. It's just, as I say, it's just a little bit of labor and time consuming and uh, not the easiest thing to do, but it's still very doable. It just takes time is, is what I'll say about it. So I'll put the inflation bag aside to show you the mattress itself. This has a single inflation valve on one side. It is a much bigger mattress, I'll tell you that though. And let's slide that down there. Open it right up. As you'll see, it will take a bit longer to inflate. Now, it again, has the um, inflation valve here but it only has the single flap at the bottom here. So to deflate it, you actually have to reach inside and there's a little flapper valve that you push aside when you go to deflate it. And I think this, yeah, it can still use the same nozzle. I wasn't sure if it would use the same nozzle or not. As you can see, it fits right on. And again, I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Right, again, it didn't take that long to inflate this mattress, but it did take considerably longer than it did for the Sea to Summit. But as you can see, this is a much bigger mattress, but it's comfortable. I'll tell you, this is a nice mattress with or without the hammock. This is my preferred mattress. A little bit bigger when folded up than the Sea to Summit, but uh, when you're looking for comfort, this is a much nicer mattress that way. All right, let me take this one and put it out of the way and I'll show the next one. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the Canadian Military Self-Inflating Air Mattress, very similar to Thermarest. This one is made on contract 
for the Canadian military. I'm going to open the valve. It works exactly like most thermorests, well, all thermorests for that matter, and roll it out. And now I'll show you the reasons why I wanted to demonstrate with this. If you have a thermorest that uh, you haven't used in a while, one of the things you'll notice is that it takes forever for the foam to draw the air back into it. And it's usually down at this end where it takes the longest. In fact, I've left this one and ones like this open and it seems to never really fully inflate down here. The foam never seems to recover the full shape that you're looking for. So here's a little tip. If you have one of these, uh, what some people will do, and I've done in the past as well, is to blow into the valve to introduce more air into it. And of course, we know that that's not a good idea to do that because every time you blow into the bag, you're introducing moisture from your breath, moisture and potentially bacteria, which will start to grow mold maybe inside of the bag over time. And of course, moisture will freeze. So uh, you don't want to blow into your bag to inflate it if you can help it. So if you have some type of an inflation aid like the pump itself, then you're much better off. So what I I want to do is how am I going to demonstrate this limited amount of room but I want to show you how it is I'm going to use the pump with this type of an air mattress so none of the nozzles I have will fit over top completely over top of the existing thermorest type valve but the rubber universal one will. That'll fit over the top well. Now, it doesn't fit perfectly but it does fit well enough as you'll see so I'll replace that nozzle put it over the end of this one. Now, you won't be able to see the end as it's inflating, but what I'll do is once it's fully inflated, then I'll show you the thing. And again, I'll speed this up for time's sake. All right, as you can see, that didn't take very long at all. And now the mattress is at its max capacity, filled up probably uh, more full than it's been in a long time. So yeah, that really helps with these older style mattresses as well, because really you don't have an alternative, at least nothing comes with these to help inflate them. So that's where the tiny pump really does help with this older style mattresses. So that's three air mattress I've inflated. Let me show you how it works with a couple of pillows. All right, I brought the camera in a little closer so that I can give you more detail on inflating the pillow. So the two pillows I have, I have one, this is something I've had for a little bit of time now, and this is the Nature Hike uh, pillow. So it's a less expensive copy, I think, of ones that you can purchase on the market. Still very uh, comfortable, still very effective. They come in a variety of colors. I think the, I actually have two. I think the other one has like a teal, blue or green on it, but either way, they're still good. They have the same type of valve on the bottom where you uh, open it up and inside there's a button that you would press. And the, the button that to press is for deflation, not necessarily inflation. Now, I think it's the smaller, yeah, it's the smaller of the nozzles that I'm gonna to use to make this one happen. So again, I'll put it on the end of the pump fit the nozzle to it, and you'll see very quickly, this takes a matter of just seconds. And that's it. That's all it took to inflate that pillow. So uh, a nice pillow, this nature hike. I've never done a review on this because I think these are very common. However, having said that, this also came from Flextail Gear and this is their inflatable pillow, which I'll do a separate review on. I'll give you a sneak peek of it now. This is a nice pillow, very nice pillow for a variety of reasons. Take it out of its stuff sack, open it up. It's got flocked soft material all over it already. I'm like the nature hike. I mean, the nature hike is comfortable, don't get me wrong, but I usually end up putting a t-shirt or something over the top because it just feels noisy under my, uh, you know, when your face is on it. And, you know, you can get a little sweaty on top of this. So a t-shirt or something is great to put on top of that. This one, you don't need it. It's just a soft material with a little bit of a, a padding on the top where your face will go. And one more feature on this I'll show now is that it has this, this retention strap, which you can put around your air mattress to keep your pillow in place because you all we all know how often we're chasing them as they come off of the air mattress unless you have something to block it on this has the double inflation valve very much like the sea to summit so open up the first valve find the uh, nozzle that'll fit turns out to be the larger of the cone nozzles 
Put this one on. I'll quickly inflate this and you'll see what it looks like. All right. All right, and that's it. That pillows take virtually no time. Now, I did fully inflate this one, but when I go to use it, I find this is just a little bit too firm. So I usually take just a tiny bit of air out of it. But you can see it's a contoured pillow, kind of anatomically correct. Um, I quite like it. I'll, I'll do a separate review on it rather than take any time now. So you can see how quickly it inflates pillows. Now, there is one more demonstration I want to do with this. I'll have to set up for it. But basically, I want to demonstrate how it can be used uh, as a vacuum for, with vacuum bags like this. All right, for this demonstration, I'm using a vacuum bag that was purchased at one of our local dollar stores. I will tell you that Flextail, Flextail Gear does make and sell vacuum bags uh, designed specifically for use with their pumps. Uh, this one was designed to be used with a household vacuum cleaner that you would place over the top of this nozzle to draw the air out. And they are surprisingly effective if not high quality, you know, they do work. And the way these work, they're like a big Ziploc bag that you open up on one end. And I'm just gonna take a little puffer jacket for this demonstration. Then you make sure that the Ziploc is sealed. This one's been used a few times, so it takes a little bit of work sometimes to make sure it is sealed. I've got it sealed well now. Feels like it. We'll know when we go to start, though. All right, then there is a little closer that goes into the valve itself right here that you would pull, uh, take off. Now, one little tip for doing this. Try to remove as much excess air now before you attach the pump to it. And not so important when you use a household vacuum, but if you want to save battery and make this faster, try to get out as much air. So I apologize for the noise involved now but any air that you can remove now is gonna make your life, or make things quicker, of course. It's taken me a second to get the air out, so I'll just speed up this portion of the video until all the air that I can reasonably push out is out of the bag, and then we will uh, attach the pump to it. All right, I haven't removed all the air out of the bag, and, and I might as well say this now, because I know someone's going to, that it would have been much more efficient had I <laughs> pressed the air out of the bag before even sealing the end of it, kind of like you would with a dry bag. And yes, you're right, it would have been made this much faster. So I'll admit that now. Now, as far as uh, attaching or using the pump itself, where the air normally would come out of this end of the pump, now you want to take your attachment and put it on the other end, looking at the flow. The arrow's going this direction, so the air is going to move through the pump in this direction. For this bag, I need to use the universal adapter. It isn't a perfect fit, but it's as close as any of the other ones that I have, and I kind of have to hold it on. It won't stay on the uh, bag unless I hold it there, so again, I'll speed this up as it completes the process. Okay, I probably could have removed a little bit more air out of it, but you can see how compacted that got already, but I could probably shrink it down a little bit more if I wanted to spend a little bit more time on it, but I think you get the point for the demonstration. So here's yet another use for the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X. If you have it with you, use it as a bellows. And uh, I'm using it now because the wood that I have is picked up primarily off the forest floor. Some of it is split out a little bit to get access to the dry, but it's all a little bit damp. And, uh, well, just watch and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> I think I could probably turn that into a forge with this little thing. 
All right, let's go over a few of the pros and cons for the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X. Right off the top, this thing is really convenient. It is fast, it is effective, and one of the nice things about it is the fact that if your attachment point fits nicely and snugly inside of the valve on your air mattress, you can get up and walk away and do some other chores while this thing is inflating. You're not stuck there on your knees using a manual bag or pump to inflate your mattress. Um, yeah, that's probably one of the best things, but still this is an additional weight that you're going to have to carry with you as well as something you have to purchase. So you're going to want to get more than one use out of this to make it justifiable. And right off of the top, the second use that this serves so, so well is the fact that it has that integrated lantern. This really can replace most of your lighting needs when you go camping. Certainly inside of your tent, there's plenty of light for doing that. And I suspect there's enough light for using this around your campsite for the chores you're going to need. Now, I wouldn't use this for navigation in the woods. I would have something else. I'm going to be hiking through the woods at night, but certainly for food prep or uh, building a fire or anything else around the campsite, this provides more than enough illumination. So those two things make it much more justifiable. The other features that add to the fact are the fact that it's not only a pump for inflating, but it can be used as a vacuum for deflating. That's really nice. It also has that magnet on the end of it that you can attach to something to use as a work light. And that bonus thing that I showed you where this can be used as a bellows, especially if your fires are struggling, just gives you one more additional feature that makes this worth carrying along with you. Now, one of the other benefits for using a device like this means you don't have to blow into your air mattress to inflate it. We know that's a bad practice anyway, because of course, introducing moisture into your air mattress means two things. One is going to reduce the insulative value, especially in cold weather. Moisture can freeze and there that's not good, of course. The other thing is introducing moisture means that you could also be introducing bacteria and a means for bowl to grow inside, therefore reducing the lifespan of your, in most cases, rather expensive air pads as well. And I think the last thing I like about this is that it's small and relatively lightweight. Now, it is small, there's no question there. And I say relatively lightweight because I'm trying to compare it against the manual devices that came with each of my two air mattresses. So this is smaller, all packed down. This is smaller than either of those devices, but it's not lighter but it's not that much heavier. It's about twice the weight of each of them. So, you know, you are packing some more light, but when you look at all the other features that come with this, then this makes this something worth considering and to replace each of those manual devices. Now, are there any pros that go along with this? Well, one is a relative, con or any cons, I should say. One is a relative con, and that's my personal opinion, and that is the high pitch noise that goes with this. And it may be because of my hearing impairments, but I find that rather annoying to my ears. That's a small thing and certainly not a deal breaker because it's not on for that long. I guess the other thing is, of course, you have to remember that this is a battery operated device. And it, although it is rechargeable, it still has a limited number of uses. So for a few days, no problem. You've got all the battery power that you need with this. But if you're going to be out for an extended period of time, you're going to need some way of recharging. Now, for me, I carry a battery bank with me anyway, mostly for the video equipment that I use when I go out, but also for my other other electronic devices like rechargeable phones. And yes, I do take my telephone with me, my cell phone with me. Uh, it's not that I'm stuck using that while I'm out there, but it's a safety device and you do want to maintain the charge in that. So just be aware that this is a battery operated device and it might fail you, especially if you don't make sure it is charged before you take it out. Speaking of charging, I pointed out that the USB type C charging port is right here. Right above that, there's a tiny slot in the device and that's where you'll see a red light while it is charging and then a green light when it is fully charged. Now, to be honest, when I looked at it, it's not obviously green. You kind of have to look at it at a bit of an angle. It kind of looks orangey green, but you'll know it's different than the red charging light. So that's that's what it appears to me anyway when I charge this up. So those are the pros and cons I have for the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump 2X. I will be giving you all the information I have already spoken about in the video description below as well as links. And one more thing, Flextail Gear is offering a 15% discount for buyers who use the code that I put in the video description as well as put across the screen right now. So you can use that and take 15% off of your device if you were to order it through Flextail Gear. All that information is in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments, then please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference.
Bye for now.